good afternoon. This is a 5 p.m. meeting on Thursday, November 2nd of the New Home Safety Commission. Uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Secretary, can you read the minutes or you want Steve to read them? As long as I can read the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you can please. <laughs> okay, the minutes from the last meeting from September 7th meeting was held, was read by the city engineer and accepted as read. Old business was covered on April 13th, 2017, recommendations to conduct an engineering study of North Island Avenue at Center Street and Oak Street. City Engineer Kohler uh, pr uh, provided information related to this study. The City Council approved the contract with WSB and Associates at their October 3rd, 2017 meeting. WSB has indicated <coughs> that they plan to place their video and counting equipment out to do a two-day count on Tuesday, October 10th and Wednesday, October 11th. The anticipated schedule is to be presented this, their final report to the Safety Commission on December 7th, 2017 and to the City Council on December 19th, 2017. Second item, on October 13th, 2016, Recommendation to authorize a transportation alternative application to fund the installation of a rectangular, rectangular rapid flashing beacon on Broadway at 4th South, tabled by the City Council on January 3rd, 2017. City Engineer Kohler provided information related to the previous City Council action on this item. Cindy Winters. <coughs> Uh, heart of New Alham. Heart of, heart of New Alham presented the results of the RRFB survey that she conducted and provided a student density map to the commission. Discussion ensured. Uh, police Commissioner, Co Police Commander Borkert appeared to the to state that he lives near this intersection of Lee's the protection crossing would be, should be implemented. Amanda Grebner moved to recommend to the City Council that they apply for a grant to fund the RRFB installation, second by Harry Hoffmeister. City Engineer Kohler interjected that the federal grant would not be available until the uh, 2020, 2022 and that a state SRTS grant may be available in 2019. The motion was approved by the members present without specifying which grant should be pursued. New business received correspondence from the Brown County Attorney Hansen and the Police Chief Whelan regarding pedestrian crosswalk safety when crossing Center Street at State Street. Response and aerial photos attached. City Engineer Kohler introduced the topic. CSAH 13 is a Brown County Road. There is no accident history for the last five years at that intersection involving pedestrians. The intersection sight lines are good. The Highway 15 Broadway detour that was in place from May through mid-September of 2017 more than doubled the average daily traffic on Center Street. The city has painted diagonal lines within the city st street crosswalk at the, pr at the request of the Brown County engineer. Paul Gunderson, Brown County assistant attorney, appeared to state that several county employees park on the north side, North State Street and across Center Street to get to their office. Brown County Commissioner Burkett appeared to ask questions about how other county and city inter intersections are dealt with. Discussion ensured. Motion by M Mr. Melke, seconded by Joe Dimmel, to receive the correspondence and to wait for the results of the North Highland Avenue intersection study at Center Street. Motion was approved by the members present. Vice Chairman Mitchell said that if there's any more business to come before the commission, City Engineer Kohler advised the commission that it was his intention to present the primary preliminary 2018 CIP to the commission at their November 2nd, 2017 meeting. The intention is to provide 
an opportunity for the Safety Commission and others interested individuals to provide input to the city's complete street policy relating to the recommendations improve, improvement. That's all I have here. Any additions or corrections to the minutes? If not, I need a motion. Move it. Accept the minutes as read. I have a motion to accept. Will you have a second? A second. I have a second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. All right. How deep do you want to, you, you want to do, which one do you want to do first, Mr. Taylor? Uh, Mr. Chair, I think you should go through all business as it's numbered, and then we'll get into the new business. Okay. That would be, uh, get back to the old business. Engineering study at North Highland Oak. Yeah. Oh, I gotta go, I gotta go one more page. On, on the agenda itself, which yeah, is actually yeah, an okay. amended agenda. Okay. Now that was the additional that I got here. Okay. Oh, old business. Uh, October fifth, uh, twenty seventeen. Recommend authorized application for the for the to fund the rectangular rapid fire beacon on Broadway at Fourth Street, considered by City Council on October seventeenth, and tabled in favor of the SR SRTS grant application in twenty eighteen. So that's it. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to kind of reinforce uh, what had happened at the City Council meeting, as you noted in the uh, minutes from the last meeting, or was noted, uh, this commission voted in favor of uh, an application, but did not specify whether it be a federal or a state grant. There was some discussion amongst, amongst the City Council, and unfortunately, we don't have the state grant, the sa Safe Routes to School, grant application available just yet, so it was hard to explain the details, but I, I feel it'll probably be similar, and in some cases it's easier to deliver a state grant uh, compared to a federal grant. So um, that'll be probably next year again, but that would be available and we'd go, go ahead with that uh, application process. Okay. I, th I think what they're looking for is a motion to that we recommend going at rec that pace. Carry, carry the recommendation through. Through to apply for the state one, not the federal one. Okay. That is a motion. Do I, hear a, do I hear a second? Second. I have a second on the motion. Any further discussion about the motion? Any further discussion about the motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, item number two is a recommendation to Hardin Walm. Uh, curb extension pilot program. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Well, state your name and address, please. Cindy Winters, Hardin Walm Project and the Safe Routes to School programs. Um, I work out of the hospital. So um, on September 25th through the 29th, we conducted a demonstration project to put temporary curb extensions out at North 5th and Washington Street to see if it would help to calm traffic along the way. And you have several different handouts in front of you. Which, where is this gonna go up at? Oh, shit, I have to look at um, And on those, those handouts that I gave to you, the initial plan was to have the um, police department's traffic calming device parked along North 5th Street so that we could get traffic counts. <laughs> and um, traffic counts before the event happened and then during the event so that we could see what the speed of traffic was along that route prior to and then afterward or during. The um, traffic calming device was not working. So what you have in front of you is on the um, average vehicle count sheet at the top that has yellow boxes on it. This was a count that was done on that particular street on May the 3rd through May the 7th. So this is like our best 
guest estimate of, of how much traffic goes along that street and then the speed of traffic. One thing that I think it's important to know is that the intersection of 5th North and Broadway was closed on the Wednesday and Thursday of that particular week for work on the intersection with the resurfacing of Broadway and it was opened again on Friday and I think that's why you see a bigger jump in um, potentially traffic on Friday versus the other days of the week because on Wednesday there was 2,160 cars and then on Thursday there were 2,143 2, cars and on Friday it jumped up to 2,904 2, cars. And then the, the yellow squares are the highest number of vehicles that particular day and in that time frame. And at the very bottom of the sheet <coughs> is a, a graph of how the traffic, the speed of traffic is bundled into five mile per hour buckets. So you can see how fast the um, traffic is moving on Fifth Street. And for the most part, the majority of cars on North Fifth Street follow the speed limit. It's 30 miles per hour. So 41% of the cars that, tra that travel down um, North Fifth Street travel between 25 to 30 miles an hour. And then there's a 20% that drive between 30 and 35 miles per hour. So we don't know what the actual breakdown is between 30 and 35. And then um, there is a 1% of the cars that go between 35 and 40 miles an hour on that stretch of road. And something, and then on the back of that particular sheet, I wanted to share with you what the survival statistics are. If someone's hit by a car at different speeds. So the survive, if, if an individual or a pedestrian is hit by a car at 20 miles per hour, Nine out of 10 pedestrians are gonna survive that, that crash. If a pedestrian is hit at a car that's going 30 miles an hour, five out of 10 pedestrians are gonna survive that crash. And then um, if he is hit by a car that's going 40 miles an hour, only one out of 10 are gonna survive. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important to understand what their survival rate is for a car that might hit a pedestrian at different speeds. So traffic isn't terribly bad. On, there is a lot of traffic on that street. The uh, MnDOT did a average daily, annual average daily vehicle count on that street in 2014. And there are about 3,600 cars, cars that travel that particular stretch by the school on a daily basis. So that is a lot of traffic that goes by that area. And as you can see, the highest amount of traffic for at least two days was um, between seven and eight when the kids are going to school. And then um, another really another high point is dismissal times and um, between three and four. So the next sheet with just with the blue and the white are actual are the actual counts that I took manually and with a trail camera that was set up on the NUAC school to look at the intersection of North Fifth and Washington Street. So I could catch <coughs> two different intersections. I caught the crossing on Fifth Street and then I caught the um, the east or the south crossing on Washington Street with the trail camera. And though the numbers that you have in front of you are the number of pedestrians and the number of bicyclists on a daily basis during that particular week that went through that intersection. Not a lot of kids walk to school in the morning at New Axe, but a lot of kids do walk home from school. So there's almost double the number of kids that walk home rather than walking to school. So for the entire week, there were 66, and this also includes adults, so then the trail camera was set up to take pictures of people using the intersection be from 9 o'clock in the morning until 7.30 at night when it got dark. 
I did manual counts from 7 in the morning till 9 o'clock in the morning. I didn't set the trail camera up to take pictures then because the new X um, crossing guards are, were helping people get across. They found the camera and they were dancing in front of it and taking selfies. Um, <laughs> So it kind of threw my numbers off. So <laughs> I set it up so that it wasn't taking their picture all morning long. Um, so it, it took <laughs> pictures from 9 in the morning till 7.30 at night. And so um, during that time frame, there were 66 bicyclists during the course of the week that crossed 5th Street, 5th North Street, and there were 291 pedestrians that used that <coughs> intersection that crossed 5th North Street. And then on the Washington Street on the south side, there were 41 bicyclists and 228 pedestrians. And I did not start counting on Washington Street, that in the south side of the intersection, until the second day versus the first day. Because I, I noticed on the first day that there were quite a few people using it. And I thought, well, I better start counting. So I don't have counts for the very first day. And I don't have counts in the morning at either intersection on Wednesday because I was busy setting up the rest of the intersection with some of the decorative things, so I couldn't um, do the counts at the same time. But that intersection is used quite a bit for people to cross. I did talk to the neighbors, um, and they had commented that it is difficult to cross that street and that they feel like there's a lot of, um, that there's a tendency to speed. Uh, the, the, um, Curb extensions didn't slow everyone, but it did slow a significant number of people that were um, crossing, that were trying to cross the street. And the safety guards that are sixth graders, I asked them how they felt about it, and they, they thought that it had helped slow traffic across that intersection as well. And then we had the Coalition for Active, Safe, and Healthy Streets meeting at that intersect, at NUAC school on that Thursday during the demonstration project so that the coalition members could see how that intersection functioned with the curb extensions. So do you have any comments that from Steve and Joe about how you guys felt that um, intersection worked or that demonstration project worked? Mr. Chair, I had maybe a couple of comments. Um, it certainly was a uh, configuration that kind of favored the pedestrians and bicyclists mm -hmm. and created a quite a bit of delay in the roadway itself so it almost to me was there was a couple of mornings or I, uh, the morning I was there the morning before I stopped by traffic was blocked up backed up for a block which to me seemed a little bit excessive with regard to what you were trying to accomplish but I think it did a good job of you know accommodating the pedestrians and bicycles so maybe somehow there's some a little better balance between mm -hmm. creating that delay and then obviously you mentioned the first thing you mentioned was we didn't you didn't have the speed right. uh, available and that would have been a key indicator uh, you know to on the before and after so those are kind of my two thoughts if we could soften that up a little bit but Maybe it was just the first time through and all the cones and all the commotion and maybe it would quiet down after a while. But I just noticed there was a lot of, a lot of delay along the 5th North, which isn't all bad. I mean, peop, you know, it's not, not a long time they have to wait, but I, I thought one block might be a little bit excessive. That's okay. probably my comments. Any other comments? Okay, all right. And this, the, th the third sheet that you have is are the student counts. So part of the project was that the students from NUAX, their safety guards go out, their crossing guards go out 15 minutes before school starts and they come out 15 minutes after school's dismissed to help kids cross the street. So they were given clickers to count the number of pedestrians, bicyclists, and cars that went by in that 15 minute time frame. And so I just wanted to share that with you. I'm not sure exactly how accurate it is. They didn't, I follow the, the MnDOT methodology for collecting and recording um, bicycle and pedestrians that go through an intersection. These kids were using clickers to count and then it became a contest to see who could get the most cars. 
um, on a particular day. So, <laughs> but I, they went to the trouble of collecting it, so I wanted to share it with you so that you have that as well. Um, the school principal, Shelley Bauer, met with us at the CASHES meeting as well, and she felt that the intersection helped, um, the, the curb extensions did help to slow traffic and it felt safer in the community, and I, rec I did receive an email from a parent and one of the administrators from the um, crisis nursery that's next door, and the crisis nursery uses the playground equipment at the school when they have kids there, and they um, felt that it did help make it feel safer to cross the street so that their kids could use the facilities across the street as well. So I guess the recommend, yeah, go ahead. I got a question. Mm -hmm. What's changed? I mean, what you did was excellent, uh, yeah, very, very complete and in detail, but what's changed over the years? Has this been a, is this a problem now, or has it been years ago and we didn't do anything about it, or what's pro what prompted this? What prompted it is that the number of kids that walk to school has really significantly dropped. So in like 1969, 50% of kids used to walk to school. And in 2015, New Alm took account for the number of kids that walk and bike to school. Only 12% of kids walk to school and 4% of kids bike to school. And there's also an obesity epidemic in our, in across the country. And part of it is that we have pretty much engineered physical activity out of our everyday lives. So it's harder to get physical activity. So parents drop their kids off now, and then there's the stranger danger. That's That statistic has not changed in years, but the media just hypes it up. So parents don't feel comfortable letting their kids walk and bike to school, and that's, that's what's changed. Vehicles are much, I would say, probably bigger now, too, than what they used to be years ago. Any other questions? Okay, no, no other questions? Any other questions? No? Maybe we end this there? We want to thank you for, for mm -hmm. giving us the information back because I know when we first started this back about a year ago, we didn't really had no idea what was going on or how it was doing it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this information will, will be helpful. Okay. To help us do what we have to do. Right, so when the street's up for renewal or reconstruction, it'd be nice to if we could put curb extensions at that location to help calm traffic. Because New Axe, we have been talking about that particular intersection at the Safe Routes to School program for quite a few years, and it is in the Safe Routes to School plan to try and get a <coughs> safer crossing at that intersection so that kids can get, or at least across fifth. That didn't say, we, it, it doesn't identify which intersection, um, whether it be State or Washington. But there was a death at State Street, Fifth and State Street in 2014. And so that New Acts uses Washington Street for their um, crossing guards. And they encourage their students to cross on Washington Street if they're gonna cross North Fifth Street, so. Okay, thank you very much, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, I guess now we get into the, uh, the number two would be a Harding Monkey done. Uh, application has been done. Okay, well, I guess we're going to new business, Steve. Or do we make some comments in reference to this? Oh, I we can make comments first. If well, what I was hear some. what I like she said when they redo the streets, Steve. Well, when is let's go? When is the next update on Fifth Fifth North Street, Mr. President um, or Mr. Chairman? Excuse me. Um, Fifth North is probably a little ways out. I, I would in, I would anticipate these improvements would be done. Uh, when Washington is reconstructed, the segment from fourth to fifth is in relatively bad shape, and the underground utilities are quite old. I don't have it in 18, but my thought, and I will get a three-year plan. This is kind of a 
just for next year that 2019 might be the year when we would do that segment and then if it's ordered by the city council we could do those knuckles or bump outs or uh, if we did a bump out like that would it be just on one side of washington well that would be something we would look for a recommendation from this group and perhaps miss winters as well um, you know it, it seems that when we were down there uh, that everyone was kind of crossing on the one side which made some sense but i guess we'd have to look at the configuration and uh, hopefully this group would have some thoughts on that as well I would have a question for Chief Myron. What do you think about this, about these bump outs, and would they help control the traffic better or, or not? Well, you know, there's statistical data to show that it works. Uh, Chair, I would dare say, I would query Mr. Curry at the Public Works Department for his staff to see you know, how user friendly it is for maintenance and stuff. Uh, again, you know, the numbers support. Uh, the use of and, and you know uh, the safety setup and, and again you know, it's, we haven't seen it really anywhere else in the city not that I'm aware of Steve these bump outs Mr. Chair we well downtown Minnesota Street yeah. I, I think uh, yeah snow removal maintenance but I, I think they could adapt the the good news is there's storm sewer at those corners so we don't have to uh, bring a lot of extra piping in and create an additional expense so we can we can kind of make it work if that's where this group and the City Council wants to go any other question ladies you got a question for any of this or is it we're just all sinking in now as I, to what you we're know, doing I witness the flow because I go there every day to pick up my kids uh, it seemed like it went okay I know he talked about the traffic stopping, and I know sometimes that's the, the guards kind of communicating with each other to get out there to get the flag out, and then once they get the flag out, you know, the kids cross, and so I think there is a disruption of traffic there because they traffic does have to stop to let these kids cross, so sometimes there is that backup, but it goes pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had a few um, people just mention to me that it helped them slow down. They, you know, noticed the cones there, and so that they, you know, kind of thought a little bit about it as they were going through. I know I normally go through it at dinner time, so it doesn't, you know, the kids are all playing, and uh, the other kids, I have to watch out for, for balls and stuff like that coming out in the street too when I'm going by too. Mm -hmm. But uh, I use that's when I use Fifth North the most, and. Uh, Maybe it did help, you know. I never really sat my truck there and, and took a count or took, took a, an actual count as to what happened, but uh, maybe, it, maybe it did do some good. I, th I, th I think in experience in other towns um, that have them, what it helps because if there are cars parked along the street there and kids are waiting at the sidewalk, you can't see them. because, yeah. the, And so bringing them out to the, be even with the parked cars, you can see them waiting there. And um, so it's just more visibility for the kids and drivers can see them easier. Mr. Chair, I think one of the issues, like you said, there was backup of traffic. I think some of that would be educating the, the, kids, the students that are holding the flags, because I've seen in some uh, not on that intersection, but on Washington and uh, six, they'll they'll put the flags out and then they'll turn around and here's three kids coming way back and they're just taking their time and so they're holding them up more. It's kind of like say if they're that far back, bring your flag in, let the traffic go, and then put it back out. Make them wait. So it's kind of a balance type situation would solve some of that. So I think it's just an education of the patrol people. To understand that you got to also let the traffic go too, so, so I don't think it would be a major issue. Any other comments? Or should we move on to our next item of business? All right, we will move on, Mr. Kaler. Right. Thank you, Mr. Who's, who's going to do it? 
Uh, I will begin, and uh, Assistant City Engineer Stad I will be bringing up some plans when we get to the uh, interesting parts. <laughs> so I've included in your packet a uh, City of Nuam Complete Streets Policy. I'm sure everyone has read it over several times. And it suggests that the New Home Safety Commission is the conduit whereby interested individuals and groups can provide input into the capital improvement program development process. So that is uh, the main reason why I brought it before you this evening. I put together a uh, preliminary listing for 2018. I would just uh, suggest or remind the commission that it still needs to go through the city council process and be adopted and ordered in in public hearings and some things of that nature. So after this meeting, hopefully I will uh, tidy up and complete the full report and take it to the city council sometime in December. But with that, I guess I'll just go ahead and highlight some of the areas where we think we'd we're recommending improvements for 2018. And if you look at the list of uh, projects, we start with the 2018 USA project. And the USA is just utility streets and alley. That's a kind of a grouping of municipal, impro municipal improvements that we try and uh, put forth every year. The first one on that list is Cottonwood Street from Butternut to uh, south of Ridgeview Drive, which if you're familiar with Butternut, it's just across the, the river on the Cottonwood River Bridge and then up the hill about halfway toward that new subdivision up there. We're looking at full roadway uh, improvements, curb and gutter, street lighting, those type of issues. We do have some issues with groundwater seepage in that area, so uh, we'll be doing some underground drainage systems as well and storm sewer extensions. We're planning or recommending a sidewalk on one side, which is what we call the south side, and then uh, a recreational trail on the north side. Uh, Joe, I don't know if you can kind of go through and what's there or how we want to show it. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, commission members, uh, what we have uh, kind of help explain this a little bit is just a blank plan sheet uh, for Cottonwood Street. Uh, most of the design work and um, legwork behind the project has been completed, but uh, so this is a blank, kind of a blank slate, just to kind of show you what we have, um, what we've drawn up for plans on Point this. Point out Butternut, Joe. Yep, so Butternut Street is on the left of the screen, so the Cottonwood River would be um, continued uh, to the left of that, so we're heading up the hill. The uh, Cottonwood Townhomes would be on the, on the uh, up on the top of the screen mm -hmm. in this area where those townhomes would be to kind of orient yourself. So as we're heading uh, up the hill, up Cottonwood Street, um, the sidewalk we have tentatively planned for the south side in front of the townhomes. And then like uh, City Engineer Kaler stated, the bituminous recreation trail would be on the, on the right hand side again as you're going up the hill. Um, so you can see we got some dimensions here. So we have an 80 foot right away planning for a 34 foot street that's face of curb to face of curb. So 17 feet uh, each side. And then on the trail side, the five foot boulevard, 10 foot trail. And then on the sidewalk side, it'd be a seven foot boulevard with a six foot walk. And that um, sidewalk width and boulevard width conforms to our city standards that we use for an 80 foot right away. So as we continue, next page will be heading up the hill. And we keep that same configuration. Um, the first short cul-de-sac here is uh, Woodhaven Circle, which would not be included as part of this project. Um, but then we get up to Ridgeview Drive and then the terminus of the project, um, about that 200 feet south of Ridgeview Drive. So along with this, there'd be pedestrian ramps, um, uh, crossing areas at Ridgeview at the intersections, and then at the north and south, or at, yeah, at the north and south terminus of the project as well, we'll have crossings, um, pedestrian ramps as well. So that doesn't get us all the way up the hill, but it's uh, it's uh, an, an expensive uh, improvement, and 
just trying to bite off some of that bed area where we have that groundwater issue and problems. So then the next item is Ridgeview Drive from Cottonwood to the West Terminus, which is really tied into this as well. We would uh, complete that cul-de-sac, turn gutter paving, and run sidewalk around as well. One item to note on Cottonwood Street where we terminate the pr uh, proposed project. Um, on the sidewalk side is where we enter some really challenging slopes um, with some part of with some land up in this hill area here. So the sidewalk would terminate at this location and we would have people cross to the trail to get by that um, if the project continues at some future time. But um, just an item of note there. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that segment or comments, or should we just want me to keep going and keep come back, or keep on going? On. Okay, the se the third one is Jefferson Street from Fifth to Seventh North. That's a, a complete underground <coughs> reconstruction roadway. Uh, we would do pedestrian ADA ramps at all the corners, uh, restore any of the poor sidewalk that's in there. But it's already got sidewalks on both sides. Second or the. Th Fourth one is Serial's third edition. That's a gravel subdivision up toward the airport. We want to get in there and do the roadway improvements, concrete sidewalk improvements on both sides, turban gutter, street lighting, et cetera. Oak Avenue from North Hyle and Avenue of Hazelwood is a roadway cons reconstruction where we simply leave the curb and gutter in place. There's sidewalks in those locations already. The next four are alley improvements that have been petitioned in, initial alley improvements, I, I call them. So that's just paving. Uh, the next one down is 20th North and Front Street. That's a utility uh, extension of sanitary sewer lift station. In that area, we already have a recreational trail. So we may have to uh, dig through it in a couple locations, but we'll certainly restore that. We've got one area that's got kind of a low uh, storm drain issue, we'll, we'll try and tidy that up as well. The next one, Birchwood Drive, Turner Road, and Maplewood Drive and Ferrell's fifth edition. That's a, uh, was a privately constructed uh, subdivision up in the north end toward 20th North and Garden. We're simply gonna put the Petumas Ware course on that. We've got a couple of uh, sidewalk infill areas for uh, access that will also complete at the same time. The last one, we've got one or two areas on Summit Avenue left over from a job we did several years ago that's got some settle settlement on a couple of sidewalk pa uh, panels. We want to take those out and replace them. So that's my recommended uh, utility street and alley project for next year. Um, we keep moving on, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, the next one we call our MSA, a MSAS project that's a municipal state aid system where we can use some state aid gas tax money we're able to uh, uh, designate 20 percent of our mileage within the city we get about uh, seven eight hundred thousand a year to to work on these roads this is uh, rather interesting this is german street from third to seventh north the total underground reconstruct uh, roadway reconstruction as well, and then some sidewalk reconstruction. This is an opportunity to do some things by the ball field mm -hmm. where we uh, can do some curb extensions and uh, some parking configurations that are different than are there now. We did meet with the uh, baseball association and the uh, school administrative uh, athletic administra administrators to get their input and they seem to be rather pleased. So Joel, if you want, you could kind of go through and show them what we're thinking about this. Third to seventh north, seventh north will be under reconstruction for the state next year as well. So we thought it'd be a good time to get in there and it's gonna kind of be down in that end of town anyhow. Tear it up one time instead, right. of, instead of every yeah. other week. Yeah. All right, uh, Mr. Chair, commission members. Um, up on the screen, I have uh, proposed the actual exciting portion of this project, which would be at the intersection of 4th North and uh, German, along with 5th North and German. I'll start at 4th and we'll head north. Um, what we're looking, or what we're proposing would be doing curb extensions at the intersection. Um, so really shortening that crossing distance up. Uh, it's a 40 foot, right now German Street's a 40 foot street, so we would reduce that to 
uh, 14 foot lanes in each direction each direction um, really almost cut that crossing distance in half um, same with on the side streets as well in addition to the curb extension at the intersection and in, at this location we would extend that curb extension down past the Johnson Field grandstands uh, the reasoning for this is during um, uh, ticketing for events at Johnson Field that area gets really um, busy there's a lot of pedestrians without much area to stand so this would pre uh, create um, for lack of a better term a plaza area for um, spectators to uh, congregate before games after games um, ease the congestion at the ticketing booth um, to allow people a safe place to stand um, so continuing so yeah that um, sidewalk would stop kind of right at the grandstand area we would taper back to the 40 foot street um, and then we come to an area where um, there are handicapped parking cells on german street right now they are not ada compliant so we would take the opportunity while the streets tore up to make um, handicap com or ada compliant handicap parking stalls um, the current configuration of the stalls is there's some at johnson field there's some at johnson park we are combining them into one centralized location between the two facilities. Um, so we would take, right now there's four, um, kind of two at each at each spot. Um, so we're gonna reduce the number to three um, and input from the schools, uh, they were on board with that as well. Um, they don't all get used at the same time now. So if there's a football game, generally the handicap stalls down at Johnson park aren't getting used and vice versa so we can gain uh, a usable one more usable space and they would be fully compliant as well uh, in order to make those compliant we have to bump the curb out and provide an access aisle so that's why that curb jogs in, at this area and right here that provides that five foot uh, access aisle um, in order for those stalls to be compliant continuing north we would bump the curb all the way back in again to create another concrete plaza area um, this time for Johnson that should be Johnson Field um, or no Johnson Park that's correct um, again serving that same purpose for the baseball field um, and we would extend the, the extensions for the sidewalk in this area would just be uh, to the pedestrian ramp on the north end of that intersection of serving that same purpose that we talked about for the football field again shorter crossing distances on german street and the side street uh, fifth north as well uh, any questions about that um, type of configuration in this area of the project those uh, handicapped parking areas are they uh there are they just painted on or are there is there a curb there or what what's the situation uh, so these the curb will be um, pushed out so the cross hatching that you see kind of right in the middle there that will be paint um, so that will be a, a access aisle with paint kind of like okay. in a parking lot where the, the paint leads you to the sidewalk that will serve that same purpose leading them to the to the uh, ramps and mr chair there's parallel parking on the other side of the street as well that's what those little stripes are yeah then we did have some discussion about uh, the schools are going to try and encourage the bus drop off to happen down behind the fields so we won't have to provide bus parking along the road and they, they were on board with that so occasionally there might be a service vehicle that has to drop candy or something off but that would probably be off peak peak uh, usage so looks it like it should work the bus down below right yeah, I, if you've been at games at the uh, facility, um, it's kind of in the area where the ambulance parks, and there's always a bunch of extra vehicles. I think um, game officials and stuff park there too, and the schools will work with the officials and maybe park at the community center parking lot to um, provide that extra room for the buses, especially when it's cold during football season. Um, visiting teams along with uh, uh, home teams as well use the buses to warm up during halftime and whatnot. So this would provide better use for them at shorter distance they don't have to come up the steps and out to the street in that uh, in that fashion so. so we can go back to the kind of beginning of the project everything's flipped flipped over um, just basic plans on that um, it's kind of 
those sheets are, are a little conglomerated. There's a bunch of details in there. Um, these intersection details kind of show, you know, in depth. They have the lane, lane info, and there's a bunch of other miscellaneous drainage details that you're probably not interested in at this time, but just really gives a brief overview of what the intersection could look like should this be the um, design that's adopted. And here's which, which is a striping plan that shows that um, pavement marking plan a little more in depth um, for the intersections and th those handicap stalls as well. I should note that this, the aerial photo behind this isn't quite spatially correct, so it may look like stuff is on top of homes and stuff, but um, that, that's just a, a photo to help orient yourself a little bit there. So. Any other questions or comments on the German Street? Uh, I just had a, a question, excuse me, about down further by um, the, the community center. Yep. Is, is there a crossing down there that you're going to be doing anything with, or is it just, are you just focusing mainly in front of the fields? At this time, we're just focusing strictly in front of the fields for the bump outs. Um, okay. After discussion with Park and Rec staff, they felt th there is some pedestrian traffic, but it's not as um, frequent as the ball fields are. Um, it's basically overflow parking for weddings and um, special events that are held at the community center. So their feeling was the lot handles most of their usage and they don't get that foot traffic coming across. So uh, that led to the decision to leave that intersection as is. And then with the another aspect of that is their access driveway. If we bump that intersection out, um, if we have delivery vehicles coming from the north or south, that makes that that uh, turning radius pretty tight. So. Mr. Chair, the only request that we really got from down there was to soften up that uh, steepness in that driveway because most of the people do drive and it's a little bit steep and then you go down the hill. So we can work, work some grades out for that. That's Any other questions about this? Please continue then, sir. Okay, the next grouping is the 2018 surface reconstruction project. This is uh, work that the street department does. They remove the pavement and regrade areas that do not have to have util underground utilities reconstructed or a lot of subgrade or curb and gutter re replacement or reconstruction. We, we have about 80 miles of municipal roadway in, this, in the city. We try and do 12 blocks or approximately a mile of the surface reconstruct, and we try and <coughs> program about a mile within our USA project. So if you do the math, every 40 years we're going to get to your street. So right. this, <laughs> this is a pretty good pro, uh, program. We don't do any kind of sidewalk improvements. Most of these roadways probably already have them, and we don't do ped ramps. It's just surface reconstruction on the roadways. So the next one is the 2017-18 MnDOT project when the state went through this summer from 7th north out to 20th south and beyond. They took out several trees for various reasons. A lot of them were uh, decayed or it really had found the useful end of their life. And they promised they would develop a landscape project to replace some of those trees they took down. And right now we're looking at replacing about 70 trees along that corridor from 7th North to 20th South. So that's something that's going to be bid later this year and will be done next summer. Uh, so just trees on that. The next one is the 2018 MnDOT project. That's Highway 1415, basically 7th North from Broadway across the river to uh, Kassau. 21 over Nickel County where 14 and 15 meet. There's two bridge uh, replacements. Uh, there's going to be a new bridge at uh, Highway 15 that takes 15 over 14. I think Joe has some kind of uh, depiction of what's going to happen there and as well you can kind of see that pink ribbon as a recreational trail that will follow the uh, what we call the west side of Highway 1415 into New Walham and uh, hopefully be a regional trail connection in the future. So it's, they just took bids on this project. <coughs> the engineer's estimate was approximately 35 million and it came in at about 32.5. So 
they haven't awarded the contract, but I expect they will soon and hopefully get going on this. There's some tree removal and some things they can do this summer or this winter, and then it'll basically be a year and a half or two year project. Won't be finished up until the end of 2019. So all new roadways uh, in town on 7th North. We have a, we're reducing from four lanes to uh, a three lane configuration. So one lane in each direction uh, and turn lanes as well, which is something that will be a safety enhancement. There's a roundabout uh, where just uh, north of Front Street where now there's on ramps. So that'll tend to hopefully slow traffic coming into town before you hit the uh, Front Street Bridge. And we just show you this because uh, we have worked with MnDOT on some of the elements and uh, actually are participating in some of the cost and maintenance, uh, long-term maintenance of, of these items. The trail will go up over the bridges and uh, connect right where Joe is flashing, connect to the existing recreational trail segment in the city as well. This is the segment uh, in town, 7th North from Clarkston, uh, German to uh, Broadway. So there'll be new, new roadways, underground utilities, concrete sidewalk. In that particular part of the segment, there's a, a recreational trail will be striped on the roadway itself. So that's kind of a fun project. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually it'll be less of an impact than this Highway 15 really? thing was because this is just there's 17,000 cars a day out here and there's only about eight over here and the detour will be at 20th South Street so there'll just be no traffic allowed <coughs> so that's the uh, extent of my list. At the bottom is uh, my <laughs> estimated cost. We're working out to about 5.6, 5.7 million <coughs> estimate at this time. So I don't know if you have any questions or comments. You want to open it up to uh, anyone in the audience. We have a lady in the audience. Does she have any questions? <coughs> huh? Me. Come to the mic and tell us why. <laughs> Get it on record. That's, that's very nice. Okay. Yeah, Cindy Winters, Hard to New Own Project. I really like the fact that you're implementing curb extensions in mm -hmm. other areas where there's more pedestrians, so it's there's less um, distance for a pedestrian to cross the street, which is really a very, um, it's a safety improvement. Mm -hmm. So And it'll help promote people walking versus always driving. Thank you. It was very good. What do you think of the street? Uh, the seventh, seventh north going across. Oh, the that bridges. I like that one too. Yes, I like that uh, one too. Yes, and well, at the bike group meeting that we just had a couple weeks ago, um, our bicyclists were talking about how hard it is to bike across the river bridge right now. Is that they wait till there's no traffic and because there's nowhere for them to go, they have to ride in the lane of traffic and. People don't necessarily follow the speed limit across that bridge, and they say, you know, you you ride as hard as you can just to get across that bridge to feel safe, and they say you wait till there's no one coming, and as soon as you get on the bridge, then there's a bunch of traffic coming, mm -hmm. so it's really scary for them to to ride. And so the bottom road is a very is a, a really one of their favorite routes to ride, too. So mm -hmm. and it's just hard to access right now. So this will be a great improvement for that. Thank you. I personally know that going from front up onto the highway, going north, it's got that curve and it's kind of bad. I'm kind of hoping you guys get that. But you can't see. You, you got your neck. You, you got to back that far in order to see if there's any traffic coming. And uh, maybe this roundabout will help take care of that. When you're going up the ramp toward when you when you're river? going up the ramp when you're when you're going towards. To the north, up towards Clasner. Yeah, in this case, you'd have to go a block further up over and on the roundabout, and, and, yeah. and then get in the inner. Right, so in you, the, the you will about. see the vehicles. Yeah, yes. and we could we could see the vehicles because right now you got a hard time catching the vehicles coming across the bridge. 
Yeah, and the uh, an important element in my mind is the separation of traffic at 15 and 14 on the Nicola County side. That's been a, a safety concern yeah. for many, many years. So we'll Plus eliminate, lives out eliminate there. those high speed right angle crashes at that location with uh, the 15 will go over the top and there will be a, what they call a double roundabout underneath for 14 and the other movements. We tried to convince them to put a free right turn leaving town, but uh, they resisted that uh, uh, from us. There's some problem with soil conditions at that location and some other things, and they were just trying to trim the budget a little bit. So we'll see how it works. So if the uh, commission uh, so desires a, a motion of support and that you've uh, basically had this available for uh, public input, uh, that would be wonderful. I'll be able to take that along to the city council when I complete and present my recommendation. Members of the commission, you got any other questions? Any other thoughts? Mr. Chairman, I, yes. I move that we uh, approve this, or recommend this list to the city council with our approval. I have a motion to recommend the list going to the city council with our approval. So here a second. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. You have our permission to take it over to them and let them have that. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. It's, you know, the first time we've run through this, but I think it's very helpful for everyone to kind of understand where we're it helps us a Very lot because we, we know what's going on. You know, we can, we can say what, what, you know, where, where it is. Any other, is there any other business? I'll start this, I'll start on my right. Come on now, got anything else, girls? <laughs> no, I haven't heard anything. Well, I, I miss Myron. I miss the chief and the Myron. I suppose I better ask them guys first. <laughs> chief, you got anything? Myron? Nothing, Chair. Nothing? Bobby? Nope. Nothing? Well, I'll go to my left. We'll make a motion. We adjourn. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> okay, I have a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried.